Hi, I'm Dave Whitehead. I'm the Vice President of Research and Development at Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories. Welcome to part three of our video series explaining how to configure the SELT 400L. In this video, we're going through all the protection settings beginning with the Traveling Wave Differential Scheme, or TW87. To use the TW87 scheme, we need to enable it. Set the ground and phase over current supervision levels for security. Calculate these minimum current levels using your short circuit program, assume the weakest local system, the strongest remote system, and some fault resistance as per your utility practice. Place ground and phase faults at the remote bus and record the current values at the relay location. Next, calculate the pickup values using simple formulas from the SEL T400L. Assume we calculate 2.6 amps for phase elements and 1.5 amps for the ground elements. Remember, the effective CT base in this case is 1,000 to 5, so the 1.5 amp secondary means 300 amps primary. The next element we set is the incremental quantity directional, or TD32. We need to configure this element in all applications because it supervises other protection elements and schemes. The TD32 directional element generally follows SEL's 32Q operating principle, and therefore it uses two impedance thresholds as settings. TD32ZF is the forward impedance threshold. This value is set to about one-third of the positive system impedance of the system behind the relay. Obtain the system impedance from your short circuit program assuming the strongest local system possible. Assume you calculate the positive sequence impedance of the local system as 2.5 ohms secondary of the effective CT ratio base of 1,000 to 5. One third of that is about 0.83 ohms. TD32ZR is the reverse impedance threshold. This value is set to about one third of the positive system impedance in front of the relay. For simplicity, you can use one third of the line impedance. The Z1 mag of the line relay is 3.11 ohms. One third of that is about one ohm. So enter one ohm as TD32ZR. Those two simple settings were all we needed to configure the directional element of the SEL T400L. A typical underreaching distance element, that is a zone one that trips without communication, is set to about 70 or 80% of the line length. The SEL T400L directly accepts the reach setting in per unit of the line length. The incremental quantity distance element, or TD21, has only two settings, the phase and the ground reach in per unit of the line. Let's assume the total error for the phase distance measurement is 15%, including CT and PT ratio errors, line impedance inaccuracies, and the element's transient errors. Let's apply 5% of extra margin. This gives us a total error of 20%, so that we set the TD21 MP to 0.8 PU. The ground elements typically have larger errors, so let's give the ground loop 10% more margin and set it to 0.7 PU. And that's it for the TD21 elements. It's easy. Again, remember to save your work periodically. The trip logic includes POTT and DTT schemes and links all the tripping and auxiliary elements together in order to control the SEL T400L's trip output. The trip logic has a few settings. TR is a list of elements used for tripping unconditionally. We intend to use the TD21 and the TW87, so we list the TD21P, the TD21G, and the TW87 as the tripping elements. The POTT scheme is inherently very sensitive. Two overcurrent settings are provided to limit the sensitivity to the level required by the application. In non-series compensated lines, these two thresholds are set similarly to the counterpart settings in the TW87. We use 2.6 and 1.5 amps secondary, respectively, for the phase and ground elements. Let's use the same values to supervise the POTT operation. Finally, we need to inform the relay that we want three-pole tripping. We do this by setting E3PT to 1. And at this point, the T400L is ready to protect the line. In our next video, we'll finish the configuration by looking at the fault location settings and event reporting in the SEL T400L. Thanks for watching.